Yo, what's going on people? It's your boy Ape Pancho back at you again with another video. And today we've got a couple of stories coming out of various places across the UK. And I'm going to jump straight into this one because it was quite literally only last night where I reported on the story of Ferez Matu, who had been murdered in Canning Town over this past weekend. And now only a couple of days later, I've got a sadly report once again that somebody else has been murdered in Canning Town. The victim is someone who you guys might be familiar with as well. At around 2.45pm today on the 26th of April 2021, police were called to Corfin Road in Canning Town to reports of a stabbing. When they arrived, they found a man believed to be 18 years old suffering from stab injuries and despite the best efforts of paramedics, he would unfortunately go on to be pronounced dead at the scene. Witnesses at the scene have spoke out about the incident and are understandably shocked by what's happened over these past couple of days. A dad who lives locally told My London News, quote, I have four youngsters who go to a primary school nearby. That could have been my kid, I fear for their safety. I want to move out of the area, but where can we move to? How far do you have to go? It's happening everywhere now. Another local resident said, quote, the younger generation think it's a PS4 game. Life has no value, there's no respect, no principles, no nothing. So it's not the area, it's the upbringing. But again, like I said, some of you may be aware of the victim in this situation because Newham Street Blogs would go on to confirm that the victim in this incident was a young man by the name of Junior Jar, also known as Y Grinner. In April of 2017, his older brother Ahmed Jar, aka Grinner, had been stabbed to death whilst buying a soft drink from his local shop in Canning Town. Although multiple people went on to be arrested in connection with that incident, until today his murder is unsolved, like we've seen time and time again with certain murders in Newham. And so a pretty sad story all around because for one, another young man has been murdered on the streets of the capital, for two, a mother has lost another child due to him being stabbed to death. I couldn't really imagine the pain and suffering that Junior's family is going to be going through right now, so, so we really need to keep them in our thoughts because to lose two children in the space of four years under pretty much the same circumstances is very heartbreaking. The pain of losing one child never really goes away, so for only a few years to go by and it to happen again is just extremely sad. So I do want to pay my respects to the family and say rest in peace to Junior, and I want to extend my condolences out to his family at this very sad time but Moving on to our next story, and for this next one, we've got to head over to West Norwood. At around 4.41pm yesterday, on the 25th of April 2021, emergency services had been called to reports of an assault on Norwood Road in West Norwood. When police arrived, they found two girls aged 16 and 17 suffering from stab injuries. They were rushed to hospital where their conditions are believed to be non-life-threatening, but the 16-year-old's condition has been classed as serious but stable. In regards to arrests, it's believed that four boys have been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder. We don't actually know the ages at this current time, and they are currently in police custody, but as of right now, I don't believe anyone has been charged. A witness has told reporters of the situation that went down and how a group of boys laughed as they fled the scene after the attack had taken place. She said one of them was laughing, they thought it was actually funny what they had done. Both girls were standing up in the street and one of them looked very shocked and a bit withdrawn, she managed to sit down on the bus stop. I had to call the paramedics and was screaming and was trying to put pressure on her back to stop the flow of blood. I put pressure on both girls' wounds using a hoodie and once I got that under control, a gentleman came over and took over and I attended to the other girl. The medics turned up and formed a circle around the girls but they wasn't letting anyone else touch them so they let me stay for a while. The girl that I was tending to was holding my hand and she was squeezing it. We were trying to talk to her and keep her calm. She kept saying she was going to be in trouble and I was saying to her she was going to be fine. CCTV footage of a group of at least five youths has been circulating around in the news but I won't be showing it here. The footage, although unsure if it's the group involved in the stabbing, depicts at least five youths again brawling outside of the restaurant where the girls had been stabbed. Two boys can be seen fighting before running off and then just seconds later the girls stumbled to a bus stop before collapsing with the younger girl said to have a blade still lodged in her back. 
back. And so a lucky escape for these two girls, but it's pretty sad to think that they've potentially been left for dead by this group and, and again had started to laugh like it was a game. Just like in the previous story where one of the witnesses said that to the younger generation it's like a game, it really does seem like they don't have any value for life anymore. But we have to remember that in this case specifically, these two girls could potentially be mothers, they're someone's daughters, nieces, potential aunties, grandchildren, and for you to just go and stab them and then laugh about it really does go to back that point up but again thankfully both girls survived the attack and i am hoping that they can make a speedy recovery and get back on their feet but moving on to our last story and for this one we have to head over to crawley west sussex where at around 3 20 p.m emergency services had been called to crawley college after there was reports of multiple shots fired when armed police and counter-terror police arrived on the scene it's believed that two college staff had minor injuries and presented themselves to a walk-in medical center whilst the rest of the college had been on lockdown. An 18 year old male was arrested by police at the scene where a gun and knife was taken from him. In a recent statement the police have said that a property about a mile away from the college was searched in connection with the incident but as of right now we're unsure if anything came of that and right now a motive is trying to be established with counter-terror police working with local officers where all lines of inquiry are currently open. Eyewitnesses to the incident said that the man was armed with a handgun and was firing bullets in the grounds of the college before he was taken down by a tutor who had been slashed in the hand by a knife in the process. Elise Delbotti said that the alleged attacker had told students to run. She continued, I heard several shots being fired very quickly. I saw the gunman, he was wearing a black puma hoodie and a mask. I was only a few yards away and I could see that he had this pistol in his hand and he was waving it around. The students in the college were placed under lockdown as this incident unfolded and witnesses say that pupils were running into classrooms telling people what had happened and it was then students were told to duck on the floor. But again as of right now we're unsure of the motive behind this attack as I'm recording this video and whether the gun was a blank firer or real. What I will say though is recently we have been seeing people spring into action in order to save other people's lives. We seen yesterday the story of Jimmy where he had jumped into the River Thames to save the woman's life and today this teacher jumped on the gunman which in turn potentially saved lots of lives. So I want to commend this teacher's actions because if this does turn out that the firearm was real then he really did potentially go on to save multiple lives but again he was armed with a knife as well so even if the gun isn't real the knife man slash gun man could have caused a lot of damage to other people but when I get updates surrounding this story I am definitely going to keep you guys posted on this one but let me know what you guys think of this down in the comment section below give the video a little like and if you want the latest drill street and music news out of the UK be sure to hit the subscribe button and then it notification bell, spinny boy eight punch show and I'm out.